Okay, so good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, the second day afternoon session where we'll be having a presentation around uh, hybrid API management strategies. Now, this is a round table, so we welcome interaction. Uh, the today's speaker is Shiro, who's a solution architect at WSO2, and she works with customers from uh, the business domains and provides a solution consultancy on how uh, WSO2 technology can be used effectively. Now, today's uh, session is gonna cover a few topics. Uh, we're gonna have an introduction. So we have a few slides pre prepared, which will recap on what hybrid API management is for those who are not familiar. And then we we'll look at the uh, prime factor to think about when uh, considering, you know, why is hybrid API needed, right? It's not for everyone. And then from a business perspective, you know, what would be the business incentives? So um, a brief introduction, WSO2 is the uh, world's number one open source middleware company providing middleware for enterprises. Uh, founded in 2005 with about 900 employees around the world, including uh, Sri Lanka. And today, um, many, many projects on, on, on this. So I think uh, it's best for Shiro to introduce this. So um, if there are any questions, we can, uh, we can have them on the chat. And um, I will also take questions and present them after the presentation. So with that, a warm welcome for Shiro, who will be presenting uh, with this slide deck to start off with. Okay, so um, let's start with uh, what hybrid API management is. So, um, so typically, uh, now in an API management uh, deployment, you have multiple parts. So we have the control plane, which handles the management side of things. So that would be designing the API, then publishing the API, then lifecycle management, and so on, and then um, also where API consumers would come and uh, search for APIs, then subscribe to these APIs. So all of these activities, plus the collection of analytics and generating reports would belong to the control plane of that API management uh, deployment. Then um, when an API is live uh, and consumers are invoking that, so that component would be the API gateway and maybe um, components that uh, do the rate limiting and so on. So these would basically go into the data plane. So we have two planes of uh, when we talk about an API management deployment. Now, uh, in a hybrid API management deployment, um, we basically talk about the control plane being uh, uh, centrally on a cloud, and then where you can have one or more of these data planes, uh, which can either be on-prem or which could be on a cloud and so on. Now, um, to, so to start off, like to, to come to where we are today, so previously uh, when API management was relatively new, enterprises would simply deploy all of these components within the enterprise. So the control plane components, then the data plane components would be deployed within the enterprises network. This is the same place where the enterprises services or systems would also exist. And um, so the, the users who would be designing these APIs and then consumers who would be coming and uh, subscribing to these APIs would connect to the control plane, uh, which is uh, on-prem. And then once that is done, uh, the users would start invoking APIs again through the gateway, which would be on-prem. So the gateway typically would do some validations. Now we're on the data plane and then reroute that request to the backend systems or services, which is again on-prem. So um, the main disadvantage here, or like the main um, problem that enterprises used to uh, face was that uh, there was a huge management deployment here. And imagine if it's an enterprise with like multiple locations, so then they basically need to control this deployment um, or manage this deployment across many data centers. So 
the next uh, step in this journey was where uh, the total API management solution was on the cloud. Now, this came with uh, API providers providing a total API management solution as a SaaS service. So uh, enterprises could basically register organizations on these tools. And then uh, the control plane would be on the cloud. Again, we have, uh, you could basically design APIs, do lifecycle management and subscribe to APIs. And the data plane was also on the cloud. So users would invoke APIs, that invocation would first go to the API gateway, which is on the cloud. And once the validations are done, it would be rerouted to the enterprises backend uh, systems or services, which is on the enterprise network. Now, um, with this model, though the overall management overhead was um, reduced a bit, uh, what happened here was uh, organizations uh, would have to make sure that the connectivity between that central cloud uh, deployment where the API management platform is and their backend services would be secure and would be fast because uh, there's an extra hop happening here. So organizations needed to make sure that that link was um, uh, uh, very efficient and also secure. So this brought uh, us to what hybrid API management is. So uh, in the hybrid API management, uh, uh, so we will basically start separating out the control plane and the data plane. So in the next slide, uh, where you can see that uh, the top part is where the control plane is uh, still on that central cloud but uh, the enterprise network is where the data plane is deployed. So uh, the, the users who will create APIs, who will do lifecycle management and publish them so that they're visible to the rest of the world, will still go to that central uh, cloud and do all of those activities on the control plane. Then users who will consume APIs, for subscription purposes, we'll go again to that central cloud location on the control plane and subscribe to these APIs. But once subscribed, uh, when, when these users, uh, these consumers will start invoking these APIs through maybe applications they're using and so on, then those invocations will not go to the cloud anymore because they will be, uh, received at the API gateway, which is the main component of the data plane, which is now deployed in the enterprise network. So uh, the enterprise network is where the backend services and systems are, and uh, the invocations come directly to uh, this location, which is much closer to the services that uh, are going to be exposed as APIs. So part of the deployment is on the cloud, which is uh, in a central cloud. And then the data plane is uh, going to be separated deployed on-prem. Now, um, moving a little bit forward. So uh, enterprises have legacy systems and services, which are mostly on-prem. But then, as you can see, uh, uh, if I go to the next slide, you can also basically have new services that enterprises are creating, which are on the cloud. So these can be using cloud services. Maybe they have some uh, services have, which have already been deployed on the cloud. So in, in such cases, you can have multiple data planes. Some of these data planes uh, on, it, on the uh, enterprises own network, whereas other uh, data planes closer to the cloud services that are being exposed. So, so hybrid API management basically brings the advantages of both of these uh, main deployment types of uh, offloading the overall management of the, of the control plane to the API, uh, API deployment provider. Uh, whereas also still uh, removing 
the enterprise needing to have a secure and a efficient link from the cloud to the enterprise rather the ability to move the data plane closer to where the backend system is and then uh, provide users with a very efficient uh, service so this basically is how enterprise uh, so started using uh, hybrid management and how it's used today so to just recap those points i think if we uh, look at them on a single slide so uh, on the next slide uh, I have uh, sort of summarized this. So the common pattern here is to have the control plane on the cloud and then many data planes either uh, on-prem or on the cloud. Uh, very rarely you can see the other way around where you have the control plane on the cloud and then multiple data planes, but that is especially where it's a very large enterprise. And then they basically buy an API management tool, create their own central uh, control plane on their private cloud and open it out just for uh, their uh, business units or departments and so on. Uh, so so the, the, uh, the main things that basically needs to be here is like the ability to, to decouple these two planes and the centralized control plane to be able to manage multiple data planes and also be able to control how APIs are deployed into each one of these uh, uh, data planes. Now, um, so if you're if you're moving to a hybrid API management setting, and if you're if you're thinking of different API management tools, there are a few factors that you need to uh, look into. So those factors, uh, I've tried to list some of those factors uh, in the next slide. So, um, so the main thing that needs to uh, be available is uh, topology flexibility. So it's the, it's the ability of the control plane and the, uh, the data plane to be uh, decoupled and be able to flexibly deployed uh, on different places. And then uh, the control plane uh, being able to be managed by on the cloud uh, through the uh, API management provider, or maybe a customer in that React case where you, they would set up their own private cloud, etc. And the data plane needs to have the different types of components. So I would say rather than using the word type, variety of data planes where you had different flavors of gateways which would fit in to the various uh, scenarios that are there in your uh, backend uh, systems and services. So some of these would be a centralized gateway, which is connecting to multiple services. And then in some cases, uh, you might need to have a micro gateway, which is dedicated and focused on exposing a few APIs or acting as an edge gateway and so on. And, um, Another main factor that needs to be there is uh, the ability to do uh, seamless CI CD capabilities because uh, once, uh, uh, once you basically have a deployment that is uh, deployed at a lot of places, uh, then uh, yes, the control plane might be managed for you, but still you have multiple data planes to consider. So if you have uh, a very good CI CD process, and then if your tool also has native support for CICD capabilities, then that's uh, something uh, that will help you on your hybrid API management journey. And then finally, uh, you need to have observability across the entire topology because as the, uh, as the enterprise which owns this API management deployment uh, from a business perspective needs to say, uh, what's happening and how each of these APIs are behaving at the various data planes, uh, how users are adapting to these APIs and so on. So you need observability at all plates. And then from a operational point also, uh, you also need observability. Okay, so um, yeah, so those are the primary factors that needs to be kept in mind for hybrid API management. So, um, 
I think uh, to make things a bit more clear, because uh, we spoke uh, about a lot of points and maybe a little bit of theory. So uh, what I have prepared is just a small uh, use case. Uh, we are uh, one of our customers, so uh, we can't disclose names, but this was an API deployment. Uh, which was used uh, by a financial institution, a large financial institution. And they were in turn providing services to multiple customers of theirs. Now, um, they basically uh, had different customers and uh, each customer had their own backend services and systems. So these were not shared. So uh, customer one's backend systems and services would be different to customer two's and so on. Uh, and the place where these would be deployed was also different. So one customer might have had it on their own data center, whereas another customer might have a mix of data center and cloud and so on. So uh, the, the deployment that we proposed was um, to have a control plane, which was multi-tenanted. And each one of these customers would basically access the control plane from within their tenants. So they wouldn't be sharing any information across each one of these customers, but each customer would have their own space on that uh, central control plane, which was deployed on the cloud. And uh, then uh, each customers would basically have their own data plane deployed. So some, uh, so there were basically cloud data planes where the backend systems were more on the cloud. And then there were multiple uh, on-prem uh, data planes also uh, where uh, each of the customer's data, uh, data centers held the backend systems and services and the uh, data plane was also deployed there. So we basically, uh, so from a WHO to API management uh, perspective, um, the control plane components uh, were provided by a full API management deployment on the, con on the central um, uh, cloud control plane deployment. And then the data plane, uh, which consists of the API gateway and the traffic manager, the component that uh, controls rate limiting and so on, was deployed in each one of these data planes, uh, either on the cloud or on-prem. So this is just an example of how uh, we have done uh, hybrid API management for one specific customer. Actually, who, who drove this? Was it, was it the IT department or was it the business needs? So uh, the control plane was uh, basically, uh, uh, so, okay. So the initial request, of course, uh, came from uh, the business uh, department because we, this is basically about how they could serve many customers in, who basically had different needs. So they wanted to retain all of these customers. They didn't want to go and um, let's say have a deployment each for each one of these customers because that would have been even harder to manage. So uh, the, the business requirement uh, came from the enterprise's business uh, uh, leaders. And then of course, um, understanding the different parts and how the deployment should work and then managing this deployment and so on. So that was basically done by the uh, organizations, IT department. So they, are, they all have a dedicated IT department. And uh, this is of also one instance where uh, they bought the API management uh, solution from the, uh, WSO2, but they set it up as the, the, the control plane was set up on uh, by themselves on AWS. So not basically using our public cloud, but they set it up uh, on AWS and then opened it up for just their customers, not the entire world. How did they deploy this? Did they go big bang all at once or did they do it progressively? Uh, so they basically did a POC with, um, so they would have uh, like started off with like a few customers 
and then uh, started adding data planes. So the 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 topology flexibility so allows allows uh, them to do that very easily because um, it's then a matter of deploying yet another data plane and then connecting it to the control plane. Okay. So I think we we have a little bit of time for some questions. Uh, was there anything else that you wanted to uh, use from this presentation deck? Um, no, no. So that's that's basically what I wanted to say, like giving an intro and then maybe uh, also touching upon a real use case. Okay, so thanks for that. So I had some questions come in here. This was, um, this is somehow before the event where people had a chance to add their questions. Um, so, I mean, the question, first question is the business incentives. I think you've touched on that. What other things could, could IT people be listening for in the business? What the business might want to achieve from hybrid API management? Yeah, so I think, uh, so I think one thing is um, cost controlling. Like we mentioned, like you don't have to, I mean, if you're uh, offloading this, so even if the previous example that I mentioned, like, uh, the infrastructure costs would be managed by AWS uh, and you pay as you go. You just make use of the infrastructure cost, uh, infrastructure to deploy that API management solution on. And, and in another case where the control plane is also managed by the API provider itself, then you don't need to worry about anything at all. Uh, so that management overhead and the cost that goes with that can be avoided. And then uh, the cost that they would have incurred if everything was on the cloud. So you probably then need uh, uh, the, the data plane components to connect to the place where the backend services and systems are. So you need uh, to have a secure VPN or something like that. And the cost for that goes yeah. off. Because so I'm just wondering, data sorry, sorry to interrupt, just wondering where people might start if they're new to their API management, as many people are, what consideration would this play, a hybrid API, in, in that journey, in that API journey? Is this something you would start off with or something would be quite advanced? So I think, uh, I mean, if an organization is starting off with the API management journey, uh, one main thing that they need to do is, and I want to expose this, who is going to consume this? Uh, so API management is all about customer focus, uh, exposing what you have so that more people can consume what you have. And then see, okay, now once uh, the consumers are identified and that focus is done, uh, how are these people going to uh, connect to my... Uh, uh, services and where are they going to connect from? If all of these leads to, um, let's say, uh, having having your control plane and having your data plane also in the same place, and uh, if if that basically satisfies your need, then then you shouldn't go start your API management journey with hybrid API management. You should probably start it either on-prem or on the cloud. And then as your business progresses, you would, you would uh, essentially expand on those services that you're exposing and then uh, start, well, once you do that, you will start getting the need to deploy multiple data planes and expand like that. So it would, yeah. uh, if you're starting small, you should start with API management in one place and then start expanding with uh, multiple data plans. So for example, financial services example, they may have started with their own country or their own data privacy laws and regulations in their jurisdiction, and then use hybrid API, API to then expand it as they go multi-country or multi-business. Would that, would that yes. be an example? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so this company, uh, like they would, uh, basically start off with maybe a data center that is within uh, within US. And then they basically got maybe a new customer 
who was in Europe, who has data uh, strict data regulations. Your your data can't go out of that region. So that means you need to deploy a data plane there now instead of uh, getting them to come to US. So that would mean having a data center in Europe and uh, basically uh, uh, connecting them through a hybrid data management deployment. Okay, sounds good. I think we've got a couple of minutes left. Uh, technical questions coming out here, if I can just summarize. Um, with this uh, so-called technical um, platform, it will need maintenance and upgrade. Um, so are there any specific implications? Um, you know, what are the important points when deploying this? Uh, like testing, yeah, so for think... example, you know, test versus uh, production, yeah. Yes. So uh, I think the main thing when maintaining a, a, a hybrid API management deployment, like I mentioned, is having a very solid CI CD plan and then making use of a tool that natively supports that. And then uh, when you're planning on how to test it, so I mean, from a functionality point of view, the testing is still the same. You, you need to check whether that API is exposing the service correctly. But additional testing that you will need to start looking at would be latency. So even though the data plane is on-prem, maybe or on a cloud closer to the services, you still need to be aware of that factor and see whether uh, that flow happens without basically impacting the user's experience. Then reliability and dependability uh, comes into picture because you're, you have multiple data planes and each one of these basically needs to be deployed in let's say a highly available manner. What if one of these goes down? Uh, would the other, other component in that data plane pick up and go on? Some companies, they might have multiple data planes and have HA across these. So you might need to test that. Yeah. Then connecting uh, to multiple platforms. So you might have some gateways on VMs, some gateways on containers and things like that and connectivity security. So those are the points from a testing point of view that you need to consider addition. Like having, having the CI CD could really help. However, if that's not there, then it can still be deployed. Yeah, it can still be deployed because I mean, today, uh, like uh, tools, uh, the API management tools uh, will basically have some scripting within them. And then uh, if you have a CLI tool, uh, which can be used uh, operators that are linked to Kubernetes, for example, then you can do easy uh, deployment. Uh, having a CI/CD process makes things, uh, takes things to the next level because you can automate everything and link it to that process also. Cool, cool. Well, it's good to know. Any final words before we wrap this up? Because we're at the top of the session. Um, so, yeah, so I think uh, it's, it's something that you need to look at with a lot of flexibility in mind. Um, I think the main message here is don't think of API management as something which is only in one place. You need to think of it from a customer's point of view, the consumer's point of view, where the services are and how you can make the end users uh, experience better and then make use of the flexibility that is there in your tool of choice to achieve that. Okay, great. Thank you for those parting words and thanks for your time and presentation today. And thanks for all the participants uh, attending this event. Okay, so with that, I'll close the session. Thank you very much. Thank you.